Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Now in this demo, we are going to build an end-to-end -end retrieval augmented generation, which stands for RAG AI system. And we are going to use Langchain for the RAG framework. We use FICE for the vector store. We use Hugging Face model as our LLM model. And then we are going to use Gradio for the front end. Let's talk a little bit about what RAG system is. RAG AI is just a framework that helps improve LLMs. Now there are so many LLM models out there. Now, sometimes you may ask it a question and it will give you a very wrong answer. Sometimes it hallucinates. Hallucination basically means it will ask it, let's say a question about suppose like football and it will give you some answer from politics or something totally unrelated. In order to avoid hallucinations in LLM models, one of the techniques is to use RAG system. Another technique is using fine tuning. By the way, I already have a video for fine tuning on my channel, so check that out. Okay, so in a RAG system, this works by retrieving relevant documents before trying to generate an answer. So you have a prompt, and then the RAG system is going to retrieve similar documents to the ones that you just queried or ingested. And the retrieved documents that you will get from the RAG system will be passed to the LLM to add more context to the response that will be provided by the LLM. So it's quite similar to fine tuning. The only difference is fine tuning, we take the LLM model itself and whatever data that we have, we use that to retrain this model all over again. Unlike this one, we don't train the model. We leave it as it is and then we attach a knowledge base. Comment and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And now let's get into it. By the way, I have the exact same code as I have on my GitHub repository right here. Everything is here. Now I've cloned it to my local machine. At the moment, I have only a readme file and a license. So for some requirements, we need Hugging Face Transformer. We're going to use the long chain framework for the RAG pipeline. And then for each will be the vector store. And then for GP accelerated computation, we use PyTorch. Now, when I do NeoFetch on my system, you will see that I have an, a GPU right here. It's an NVIDIA RTX 4070 Super. So I'll use the GPU to make my computations faster. That's why I need PyTorch. But if you don't have a GPU, you can just use your CPU. It may be a little slower, but it's still okay. You can do it locally. And then we will need some PDF support. We use PDF Plumber. And then for web embeddings, you're going to use a sentence transformer. And for our web UI, we use Gradio. All right. Let's set up our environment. I'm going to clear the screen here. So pretty much all the codes will be in Python. So we are setting up a Python environment. Make sure that your system is up to date. Let's run upgrade. Sometimes for some of the packages or some of the newer models that are coming out, a certain version of Python does not support it. So you may have to use a lower version of Python instead of the latest version. If you use 3.12 and it's not working, go down to let's say 3.10 if it's not installed you can use this command here to install it including both the virtual environment python itself and pip so i'll run this now you can see that it's already installed so i can create my python virtual environment vmv running this command here that creates my virtual environment right there i can activate it by running this source command And it's activated you see it's right there so i'm going to skip 3.10 next install the required packages i'm going to create requirements.txt now we'll add the packages that we need in here sometimes when you use langchain core it doesn't have everything that we need so that's why i'm calling all the langchain different versions for hugging face community and core pip install requirements.txt Paste it here. 
All right. Now, sometimes the long chain may be giving you issues. So you may have to upgrade it. Next thing we're going to do, let me clear the screen here. I'm rather creating a separate file for that called the config.py. And then within that config.py, I'll add this script, which is going to load our LLM model. And then we will call it whenever we need it. So what the script is doing is important transformers pipeline. The model we are using is Google's Flan T5 base model. You can use bigger ones if you want to, but this is a small project. So we are using the one with 256 max tokens. Now the device is set to zero, which is for GPU. If you don't have a GPU on your machine, just set this to negative one and that will use your CPU to run it. Next, we are going to build a PDF ingest script. Let me create it. Copy it, the content here into it, and then we will go over it. Ingest.py, paste it here, save this. Now, what this script actually does is it's going to read PDF files and then it's going to chunk them. It will embed them and it will store it in a vector store, which is the files. Okay. Now, because our RAG system is going to read some PDF from a location here, it needs to chunk the content of that PDF. Chunking is taking the entire PDF document and dividing it into smaller pieces. When you divide it into smaller pieces, it makes it more manageable. And those smaller pieces is what we call the chunks. And then we will take these smaller pieces and then transform it into vectors, which is the process known as embedding. Now, even though the PDF will have text in there, we will convert the text into numerical values and we embed it inside vectors. But the numerical values will have the exact same semantic meaning as the word form. And then we will store those vectors in this vector store, which is a file. Now, when you go to the script, it looks something like this. So first it will read the PDF. It will now ingest the PDF. Now there are some exceptions in here, whether it's available or not. And then here is where it does the chunking. Now, of course, you know, a PDF has sentences. Let's say something as long as this. So it will cut it into smaller pieces, smaller sections of it, something like this. And then of course it will store it. And then it's at this point that it starts the embedding. And it's using hugging face embeddings. And the hugging face model we are using for the embedding is the all mini LM L6 V2. After the embedding, now we need to store it in a vector database. After it, we will save that vector store locally. All right, so back to our readme. Gonna run Python. So it claims there is no directory uploaded underscore PDFs found. So I need to create that. Make the IR. Copy this. So this directory has to be available. Now let's run the script. So now it claims that no PDF files found. Now, since no PDF file is found, I'm going to use a Python script to generate a PDF file. So for that, I'm going to create another script called sample.py. Touch sample.py. That should create it. This is it. And the content is going to look like this. You go over it soon. All right. Copy this. Sample.py is right here. Let's paste it in here. Now, what this sample.py file actually does is it looks for the uploaded PDFs directory, and then it's going to look for a text file, and the output will be stored inside the uploaded PDFs as sample.pdf. Or just loop over the lines inside the TXT file and convert that into a PDF and store it. But the TXT file that it will look for is a file sample.txt. So you have to provide it a text file. I'm going to create the sample.txt. So touch sample.txt. 
and then within here i'll add some text now this is a very simple stuff that i copied on google a brief summary about what lang chain actually is and so you can clearly see this is a txt file okay so this script is going to look for this txt file in this same location and it will convert that into a pdf and store it inside this uploaded pdfs directory go back to our readme and to run the sample.py you run it with python sample.py okay paste this here and you see the pdf is saved over there if you click on this this is the pdf created now that the pdf is available we can go ahead and ingest our document which is an ingest.py script python ingest.py and you can see here that it's read the sample.pdf and it stored it inside the vector store successfully so when you go here you see vector store directory created if you go in there you see this dot files and dot pickle files right there those are the vectors that store the embedded chunks so next step is to build a gradio app to run the entire project on a nice web ui now a gradio app we'll call it app.py touch app.py and now i'll go in there i will copy this code okay and paste it here and this is our gradio application let's go to the script briefly so here you have all the packages imported first we need to make sure that the uploader.pdfs is ready the vector store is also ready and then here is where we load the vector store of course the vector store is face and it's stored locally so that's why you see load underscore local and remember the embeddings that we used was all mini lm l6 v2 next is to load the rag pipeline and this is why we needed the length chain that's the framework we are using so we will load the vector store load the llm pipeline and then we use hugging face pipeline to put the entire thing together now we are retrieving this results based on the knowledge base that we are building as well as the llm pipeline let's see the knowledge base that we are using this is where we have a function called handle underscore pdf this will look for the upload underscore directory this is an environment variable earlier we store that for the uploaded underscore pdf the content of this directory okay that's where the pdf is going to be this is basically looking for that file and then looking for the content of it and storing it as our knowledge base at this point we should be able to query the rag system i'm creating another function known as the query pdf underscore rag and this takes an input which is a question now when we give it a question it will load the rag from long chain right here next it's gonna print out the retrieved document or the results from the question or the query that we gave it and then it will store the answer based on the llm and the knowledge base that we created and also the source of it the rest is just gradio ui stuff this is creating a block a markdown this is creating a row some buttons here some text box for some information the first one is where you ask the question next one is the answer that you get and then the third is the source of the answer you may have multiple documents inside this uploaded underscore pdf directory when the llm answers the question it has to tell you which of the pdfs or which of the knowledge base it's actually used for answering the question that's what this means that is our radio app let's run that and see how it looks on our browser so python app.py press enter and this is going to open localhost for 7860 so let's go to our browser paste and go and that's our gradio app right here all right next is how to use it and I have a few instructions here i'm going to click here to upload Let's go to the model directory. So this is the sample one we created. I'll select that. See it's right there. 
and I'll click build knowledge base. So this will store it as part of our knowledge base. And now I'm going to ask it some questions. I can ask any question at all, but I want the question to be related to the PDF. Because remember, I created a PDF using information about Langchain. And in my browser, I can paste it here. What is Langchain? Press enter. And it's going to generate some answer. And the source, the answer here is coming from the sample.pdf. Remember, I uploaded the sample.pdf right there. Of course, there's only one document in here. That's why it's only coming from that. So if I have multiple documents, it will look through all of them and then find a common definition for what is long chain. Let's ask one more question. It says, what are some features of long chain? I'm gonna ask that here. Press enter. So it says it breaks down the process of building LLM based app and Langchain's importance lies in its ability to address the limitation of standalone LLMs. Again, this information is coming from the sample.pdf, which is a source right there. Let's ask it one more question. How does it build apps? By the way, all this stuff, you can also see it on the terminal. Our last question here is how does Langchain build apps? Press enter. It builds apps using modular design. Again, the source is from the sample.pdf. So that is a simple rack system here that we've built from scratch. Suppose you are a lawyer, you have, let's say multiple clients. And so you have a lot of documents to read. So you can use this rack system here to build a knowledge base of all the files that your paralegal would have to go through. You can build a rack system, pick any LLM model, and then you use all those court files, store it in there as a knowledge base. And then whenever you need any question answered, your knowledge base is already stored. And so you just type your question here and it will give you an answer based on the knowledge base that you've given it. So it's a very practical framework in real life. And this framework uses Langchain. By the way, if you're new here, this is my channel icon. Make sure to subscribe, like and comment for more videos like this. Use control C to exit out of this. So our app should be down now when I refresh this. Ellis, I'm going to remove the two directories, the virtual environment and the pi cache. Everything else looks good. Git add, git commit, final scripts, and now git push. I've pushed the changes. So on my GitHub repository for this project, which is rug underscore system underscore lang chain underscore hugging face. I refresh this, everything should be here. And you have all the instructions you need for your own use. Again, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you on the next one.